Art the Clown achieved nearly iconic status with Terrifier 2, but this sadistic jokester has been around for a lot longer than you might realize. Damien Leone's been making movies for a long time, and in 2013 he released All Hallows Eve, an anthology horror film which contains some of Leone's previous short films where you'll find Art the Clown in his earliest stages, making this the first full-length movie to feature art. We're going to be looking through the entire franchise while we wait for Terrifier 3 in October, and we're kickstarting things with this video. Good evening. My name's Evan, and welcome to Rockland Graves. We've got a bit of a wait for Terrifier 3, which is my second most anticipated movie of the year, so I figured to help ease the 10-month wait, it would be fun to go dive into the history of Art the Clown by looking at all of his film appearances, starting with the 2013 Halloween anthology, All Hallows' Eve. By the way, the reason that I don't have a Blu-ray of All Hallows' Eve behind me and I've got Terrifier instead is because this is my copy of All Hallows' Eve. It's a bonus feature on my Terrifier disc, so that's why I just thought I'd mention that. So for a little backstory on how this thing came to be. Leone shot his first short film in 2006 before it premiered at the Backseat Film Festival in 2008. Titled The Ninth Circle, it depicted a young woman who was stalked and abducted by a sinister clown on Halloween night. This was Art's first ever appearance, and the character would go on to make another appearance in Terrifier, Leone's second short film, which was released in 2011. It also depicted a young woman being stalked by a sinister clown on Halloween night, but it was a little more straightforward in terms of plot and dropped the satanic stuff from The Ninth Circle. This was the base for the feature-length Terrifier from 2016, which depicted two young women being stalked by a sinister clown on Halloween night. Well, he's got an M.O. Producer Jesse Bajet saw the Terrifier short film and offered to include it in an anthology among a series of other shorts from different directors, but Leone convinced Bajet to let him make the entire film himself and include both Terrifier and The Ninth Circle, leaving Leone to then create one additional short film for the anthology as well as the wraparound segments. The film released direct-to-DVD in 2013 to a pretty mixed reception, although it did develop a bit of a cult status for itself, largely thanks to the clown we all know and love now. The story the story behind how this movie came to be is really interesting, and it shows just how far back Leone's passion for Art the Clown actually goes, so let's take a look at the first ever feature film appearance of what's quickly becoming a modern horror icon. Art the Clown isn't the only thing that stayed consistent through Leone's film career, because from the opening credits alone, you can tell that the throwback grindhouse aesthetic is something that has been a staple of his work for years. An ominous synth score from Noir Deco accompanies a bunch of gory images before the credits roll and the movie kicks off by setting up the wraparound segment. We've got some kids on Halloween night watching the only movie that exists as far as other movies are concerned, and for whatever reason, their babysitter decides that Night of the Living Dead should be turned off while they carve jack-o'-lanterns. Do you know nothing of setting the mood. The babysitter Sarah is played by Katie McGuire, who you might recognize because she also played Monica Brown in Terrifier. You want a piece of my Monica Brown cookie? Brooke. Sorry. There's a very strong indie feel to All Hallows' Eve, and writing a story that heavily features young kids in an indie movie is a bit of a gamble when it comes to performances. Hey, I was watching that. Sorry. He wasn't watching that. You weren't watching that. We're just gonna have to roll with it and accept it as a part of the movie's low-budget charm. I'm partly joking, but I do genuinely think that the iffy performances and cheaper feel of certain elements of this movie do give it a nice charm. So the setup of All Hallows' Eve is that Timmy finds an old VHS tape in his trick-or-treat bag, which he doesn't remember being given. Sarah's against the idea of just throwing in the tape with the kids here in case it's some whack shit, but Thankfully, Tia's seen very clearly using a smartphone from 2013, so they won't have a proper VHS player lying around anyway. I want to criticize this for not making any fucking sense, but A, the people who still swear by watching VHS in 2024 will be at my throat for it, and B, I suppose I'm okay with them conveniently having one around because I've seen the Ring sequel where the tape is spread over email, and that was so fucking stupid that I'm perfectly okay with this sort of contrivance for the sake of not doing something like that. For whatever reason, Sarah decides that allowing children to turn the house into a democracy is a good idea, so she concedes and throws on the tape. To start off, we have Leone's first ever short film, The Ninth Circle, and you wouldn't be blamed for getting a little confused by what Art the Clown looks like here. 
Because his appearances in All Hallows' Eve were spread out by many years, there's a lot of inconsistency with his design. The Ninth Circle shows the earliest iteration of the character, and it basically looks like a really bad off-brand Art the Clown costume you'd find at Spirit Halloween. Another thing about All Hallows' Eve is that David Howard Thornton isn't the one playing Art the Clown. Instead, Mike Gianelli is the one behind the makeup, and while he's not bad by any means, it really does emphasize just how much heavy lifting David Howard Thornton is doing for the character. There is a charisma in his performance that just explodes through his incredible physicality, and that does feel like it's somewhat missing here. The Terrifier short is definitely an improvement, largely because the design of Art the Clown was majorly overhauled and is much closer to the way we know him now, but it's still just not the same. No disrespect to Mike Gianelli, because he does a good job, but what we've got now is quite a step up. What the Ninth Circle lacks in Art the Clown's visual design and performance, it more than makes up for with the narrative of this short, at least from the standpoint of it being something very different from how the other Art the Clown stories have played out. This shit's gonna get weird. A young woman is sat on a quiet train station on Halloween night. To be fair, this is something you could see at a dingy station like this any time of year. This is not a result of it being Halloween. Come on, just go, I need a fucking cigarette. Art the Clown makes his first ever on-screen appearance, and we get an early look at his patented creepy clown antics before things take a turn. It's cool to see just how many characteristics that have become staples of the character were present in an iteration from 2006. Please stop. Stop. Please stop. Please. It shows that Leone has had a strong idea for what he knows is a great horror villain for a long time, but just took many years for him to properly find his footing with Art when Terrifier 2 delivered the culmination of everything this character is meant to be. There is a weird editing decision in All Hallows' Eve where in the ninth circle they'll cut back to shots of the kids and the babysitter watching the tape every now and again, which is a little distracting when you're trying to get into the vibe of the story. I think just letting it play out uninterrupted by unnecessary reminders would have been a better decision, and what makes it more confusing is that as the movie goes on, we stop seeing these cuts back. I get the idea behind this, but since the shots don't add anything aside from reaction shots that don't change much each time they happen, it just feels off. Maybe if they'd lingered on these a little more and had things hinting that the tape is starting to tie into the real world, then maybe it could have worked. Art messes around with the woman a little more before finally showing his hand and injecting her with some really nice shit. I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. But there's something about the strange shot of Art with the uncanny train sound that I genuinely love. There's a very eerie quality to that moment that just works for me and I, I just can't explain exactly what it is. If you've seen the Terrifier movies, this is so far familiar territory for you, but this is where it takes a turn into some really weird places. The woman wakes up in a dark and dingy hallway with a chain around her neck and finds two others in the same predicament. Everything. There's no way out. In a moment that I found genuinely creepy, one of them gets pulled off down the hallway by a chain around her neck, leaving the other two in complete terror. This is actually a really good setup for a short film with some solid mystery, and this is one of those scenes where you just can't help but think about how you'd react if you wound up in this situation. The two who remain decide they're gonna follow the chain as far as it goes instead of just standing around and waiting to be dragged off, and when they get to the end of the hall they're met by anthropomorphic congealed leftover hot dog goop. The thing starts chopping up one of the women, and this is where the cutaways bother me the most because it's a reminder of how bad of a babysitter Sarah is because she still leaves the tape on even while this is happening. What is your threshold? They'd probably need to pop in a Serbian film before Sarah would even consider it too much for young children. Thankfully, Casey's chain gets severed by a misplaced cleaver swing and she runs down the hall. She goes for like 10 seconds and then makes the smart assumption that the first person she sees in this derelict place must be friendly and she's punished for her stupidity by the movie deciding to confuse the fuck out of us. This is where the Ninth Circle gets way out there when Casey wakes up to find a satanic cult of shitty McDonald Land cosplayers. This part is really weird. There's another woman here chained up and pregnant and the cultist cut her baby out of her stomach and drain her blood into a cup and Sarah still doesn't turn off the tape. Dollar Store Satan drinks the blood from the cup and the cultists strip Casey down so AliExpress Satan takes a fat rip to get in the mood and then the short ends with a high speed flashback of what we just watched. So I guess this cult kidnaps women for we have Satan at home to use to pump out babies and I'm assuming that those babies become cult members themselves. It's a pretty weird short, but it's not terrible or anything. It's not 
great either, but it's a cool relic to see where Art the Clown started and also has some shit to satiate any desire for watching some flat out bizarre low budget satanic horror. It's an early showcase for Leone's practical makeup effects as well, but the main thing it's got going for it is the insanely bizarre dreamlike tone of the short. Well hey, at least Sarah finally turns off the tape, but not after letting it play out. You're too young to be watching a baby cut out of someone's stomach. Then why the fuck didn't you turn it off when that was happening? This is like catching a kid drinking and then letting them finish it before you confiscate the bottle. There's some very odd downtime before the next short where Sarah just describes what we've been watching to a friend over the phone and the kids get in a fight while brushing their teeth. Oh, and Sarah hears a noise and the closet door moves a bit. We're really stretching things out here, huh? The wraparound segment's about what you'd expect with Tia getting freaked out about thinking Art the Clown is real and a few little hints about something going on. Not really much to talk about here aside from how campy it all is, but I like that kind of thing so I'm not complaining. Sarah eventually flicks on the next short, which is the only one that was actually made for this movie, and right off the bat there's something jarring about it. This segment has a much cleaner look to it, which doesn't fit the VHS aesthetic at all. They could have at least dirtied up the footage to make the transition less jarring, because if you're gonna have these shorts play out on VHS tape, they should actually look like they're being played off a VHS player. Anyway, this segment features a woman being stalked by an alien that crash landed in her backyard, and that's about it. There's one subplot here surrounding a mysterious painting that Carolyn's husband has been working on, but we don't actually see what it is until the end. I guess I'll save it for a moment, but it has absolutely nothing to do with the narrative and is literally just a way to remind you that this is part of an anthology that's supposed to all take place in the same universe. There are a few interesting things about this one, like how it looks like the alien is wearing a mask with the stereotypical alien face on it. This could mean a few different things. It could be that the alien is aware of the generic style alien that humans think about and is leaning into that to sort of taunt Carolyn, which is a cool thought. We do see that this is a mask providing some sort of sustenance to the alien, so it could also be that this is something they need to wear in order to be in Earth's atmosphere, and the reason we've adopted this face as the standard for aliens is because anytime they've visited, they've been wearing them. Those are both cool thoughts, but it could also simply be that this was a cheap costume thrown together because Leone originally wanted to puppeteer the alien, but had to change plans due to time and budgetary constraints, so instead it's played by Brandon Despain in a costume. I'm gonna go with one of the former ideas though because it's a lot more interesting. This is a weird one, and there's not really much to talk about with it. It's just an extended chase sequence of Carolyn hiding in different spots of the house while the alien searches for her with the power of tequila dance moves. So get found, run, hide somewhere else, rinse and repeat a couple of times until she gets got, and this one ends by revealing that the painting her husband was working on is the one and only Art the Clown. Although, if you were watching this without knowing who Art was, you'd have no idea this was the same clown as the one in the ninth circle because they look almost nothing alike. This is the weakest segment, I do at least appreciate that Leone knew it wouldn't be the best idea to have three shorts of Art the Clown stalking people and call it a day, but it does feel like he kind of wanted to do another short with Art the Clown because this it feels a little uninspired. It can be pretty goofy since the alien is very clearly some guy in a costume, but it's not going to ruin your day or anything. The painting is completely shoehorned in at the end to try to tie this in with the rest of the movie. I guess John had been seeing Art the Clown in his dreams and decided to paint it, so Maybe that's implying that he's somehow involved in the cult or something, or more likely it's just thrown in there. Sarah spots a glimpse of the alien peeking around the corner, so it seems the tape is starting to seep into her reality. The kids talk a bit about hearing noises and complain about Sarah checking on them. You stop checking in on us every five minutes. What are you talking about? I heard you creeping around outside the door and turning the handle. Spooky. I know I seem like I'm really shitting on these wraparound segments, but I actually really enjoy how campy they are. All right, well, it's time for the final segment, and what better way than with Terrifier? This is where things started to properly come together for Art, because in the Ninth Circle, he didn't really get much to do. Terrifier is where you can really see Leone's vision for the character come alive more, and it's my favorite segment in the movie. Terrifier has more of that dirty, low-budget look, thankfully, and fits the aesthetic more than the previous segment did. Terrifier is a very simple short film. This is just straight up, Art the Clown chasing after woman. That's her name. This is the most narrowed down segment in the movie, but it's that full focus on leaning into the character of Art and a fun chase with tons of great grindhouse imagery. This is entirely a vibe movie, and I think it works really well. There's a young woman driving on the road late one Halloween night who stops for gas, and it seems like she may have stopped at the wrong time because Art's been getting up to mischief here, and 
Attendant is having none of it. Mike Gianelli gets to show his chops more here and he does a pretty good job. I love how he's bobbing back and forth here like an excited child and then starts pouting when the attendant says he's calling the cops. This is the kind of thing that makes art so compelling. He's a very expressive character and well, it's still not on the level of David Howard Thornton, we've got to give Gianelli props for giving a solid show. Attendant goes inside, but he's taken a damn long while to come back out for woman, so she goes inside to investigate, only to find Art sawing the dude like the shitty part of The Last of Us fanbase wants to do to anyone who plays Abby. I'm really excited for season two, but I'm not sure I'm ready for another round of what happened when the second game came out. Woman runs back to her car and guns it down the road, making a futile call to the cops before spotting Art on the side of the road. I know this seems alarming, but I think what happened here is that Art needed some gas and Attendant wouldn't give it to him, so he got upset. Perfectly reasonable reaction, and now he just needs a ride home. Kids, always pick up hitchhikers no matter what. It's just good manners. From here on out, Terrifier is just straight up a chase sequence, and it's pretty fun. Woman stumbles across a dead body with a mutilated face that looks a lot like Victoria's, which is kind of cool. I love when you can go back through someone's work and see the seeds of ideas that they'd later use in more successful work. It's neat. The thing to know about All Hallows' Eve is that you're not getting any sort of in-depth story or developed characters. This entire movie is nothing but vibes, and whether or not you click with that will depend on how far tone goes for you. The Terrifier short has my favorite vibe out of any of these stories. It feels like an old grindhouse flick you'd find on a dusty VHS tape in a creepy thrift shop, which is awesome if you ask me. I especially like the moment where Art climbs out of the ground like a zombie with that horrific grin on his face. It's just fun. It's just really fun. Woman may not agree with me though, because after thinking she escaped by catching a ride with someone who just can't believe he got shot in the face, she wakes up in a less than ideal state. This movie's fucking weird. Back to the wraparound segment to close it all off. Sarah shuts the tape off with some difficulty and then gets a phone call, and in a moment that's genuinely great, she realizes that this is Woman when she tried calling the cops in the short. Yes! That's a damn creepy moment in a movie that's been more weird and entertaining than actually unsettling. I really like how this movie ends. The TV comes back on and shows a dingy utility room and Art the Clown sneaks around the corner and makes his way closer to the screen. The lines of reality start to blur when he starts banging on the TV from the inside and then it cuts to show Sarah standing in her living room. Just a little note, it would have been such a great detail to have something like a vase or like a glass bowl with candy in it on top of the TV that could shake a bit when Art hits the screen. That would have been really cool. She starts seeing Art in the room with her on the TV, and when she hears screams upstairs, she runs off to check on the kids, and then we transition into the grainy VHS look. Art shows up at the top of the stairs, covered in blood, and Sarah finds Tia and Timmy post-Art the Clown treatment. Wonder if this guy saw this movie. The implication here is that the tape shows things involving Art that actually happen to different people, and each time they get added to the anthology. I wonder who will find Sarah's tape in their trick-or-treat bags next year. So that's all Hallow's Eve. Look. There are some movies that are great because of how incredibly well written the characters and the narrative are, perhaps it's visually breathtaking, or there's some incredible performance that makes you forgive some issues. All Hallows Eve has none of that. To say it has a story would be a stretch. There are no characters, and it looks like it was shot on an iPhone 4 at times, but I don't give a shit, and I really like this movie. There is a very specific itch that I have around Halloween that I find very hard to scratch, but All Hallows' Eve hits the spot. It's this weird, dirty, gruesome, and campy, dreamlike, low-budget Halloween grindhouse fuckfest, and there's a lot to love here if you're into that kind of thing. I had to put a lot of qualifiers into that sentence in order for it to be accurate. The ending hits a perfect note for a very particular kind of brisk October night, and it's always nice to know that this movie exists on those days. All Hallows' Eve does not have any sort of mass appeal, so I think its relative obscurity compared to Terrifier, and especially Terrifier 2, makes sense. I really enjoyed it, but this is the kind of thing that could very easily piss someone off if they don't jive with the vibe. If nothing else, it's just really cool that we have this compilation of the earlier iterations of Art the Clown, who's very quickly reaching iconic status in the horror community. It's unique enough to be worth watching even for people who've seen the other two, and I find the story behind its production really cool. Well, there you go. I'll be going through the entire franchise over the next little while, which I'm very excited about, both because I like these movies, 
Also, because it seemed like there was a fair amount of interest, so I'm also just excited to share this with other people who are also excited about this blossoming beauty. We will be diving into Terrifier soon, but there's one other movie that I couldn't quite decide if I was going to cover since it basically has no ties to the rest of the story or cast or crew. But for the sake of completion, I will be taking a look at uh, All Hallows' Eve 2 very soon. We've also got the Omen franchise on the go right now and A Quiet Place coming up soon. It's actually quite a packed year. It didn't take me long at all to fill out the schedule. So lots on the go. We're 10 months out from Terrifier 3. So until then, thank you for stopping by Rockland Graves. I hope you've enjoyed your stay.